<laughs> True. All right. So here's the deal, chickens. Um, Andrew suspiciously has the keys to historic Rosedale Plantation, and you have the keys. Why, Andrew? I'm on the board of trustees. You are on the board, uh, and the word trust is in trustee, is it not? Yes. <laughs> I'm relatively trustworthy. Yes, you are. You're very trustworthy going into the house at night and bringing strange people with you. So all week long, we were going crazy trying to get people, anybody, to, to write to us or call to us to say, where should we send Chad and Andrew and Monty for a haunted place. And Chad bailed out of that McAlpine Trail because you said you talked to some people and they were, they said just stay away from that place. Right. It was like a mile of walking. Yeah, that's the, the scary part for Chad. <laughs> was, yeah, not, Chad for, not Chad friendly. No. Breaking no. a sweat. <laughs> Chiggers and tall grass. <laughs> and a creek. Oh, my. Yeah. So, Pabby said, why don't you call Andrew because his mother's house is haunted. And so I sent Andrew an email, and he said, I can do better. I yeah. can do better. So, you know what? I'm going to shut up, and I'm going to sit back and let you tell the story. Go for it. Well, we went in, and of course, I was nervous because uh, stuff like that scares me. You went um, in where? Went into Rosedale. Okay. Yeah, maybe you should get, you give a kind of a background of what exactly yeah, it is. The house, yeah. was, the house was built in 1815 by Archibald, Archibald Frew, and he had to sell it a year I later at auction. Him. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, he had to sell it why? A year later at auction, he was a tax collector and um, the crops failed all over Mecklenburg County. And so hmm. he had to pay the taxes himself, which was the deal back then. So he had to sell his house in order to do that. And uh, since then, it's been um, pretty much in the same family since 1987 when the Historic Rosedale Foundation kind of took it over and made it into a historic site. And um, it's supposedly haunted? Well, it was a nine, originally 900-acre plantation. Um, mm. And so we've had uh, visitors before and a few staff members, but mainly visitors, um, report all kinds of odd stuff going on, seeing people in the kitchen um, that they thought were their tour guide and it wasn't. And uh, so we... Um, it seemed like a good place to go and check it out and see what. Would How happen. did they describe the apparitions? Um, like a cook, a cook, and would have this cook. would have this been of of slave days? Yes. Okay. All right. So you guys, all three went in. What time of day did you go? Um, about ten thirty. It was what, like ten thirty or so. Yep. Ten thirty. Ten thirty at night. And, and you, so, and when we went in, the whole property's locked. So we drove in, and I relocked the gate behind us. The okay. alarm was set in the house, so we had to turn the alarm off. So we knew that there was no one there but the three of us. Okay. Um, and as soon as we went inside, I locked the door. Um, so we were locked into the house. So we knew there was no one with us. And you took recording equipment, audio, yes. not video, but audio. Correct. Right. Correct. All right. And? Um, and so we went through the first story. The house was fairly benign. Um, and we went into the nursery, which is a separate room. It has a whole separate staircase for it. Um, and then we went to the second level, and that was fairly benign, except for one small room um, that years ago was rented to um, a tutor, not a tutor in the house, but down at the Charlotte Academy down the road. Okay. Um, and that was there was kind of a vibe in that room, but not overwhelming. But when what we did got, the vibe feel like? Like a drop in in temperature? Or? Well, for me, it felt like a male energy, and I wouldn't actually that room. I let um, the guys go into, and I stood outside. Um, it yeah, Monty went all the way in yeah. there. It didn't feel threatening, but it was just palm. a very strong threat. <laughs> and, uh, I, I do well, Monty, did, 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 <laughs> did Monty, Chad, did you guys feel a, a male energy when you walked in there or anything? I couldn't describe it as a male energy, Pam, but there was definitely something. Well, what? Well, what was the physical sensation? It's kind it, of oppressive, wasn't it? it? Yeah, it was almost like you feel when, when you walk out in intense heat. Like you just feel that really closeness around you. Uh huh. Gotcha. But, but it wasn't heat. It was just that closeness thing. It was that there was a presence there. There was a heaviness in, in like, the air, like a mugginess. But it wasn't mugginess. Just yeah. that heavy right. feeling on your skin. Okay. But even worse than that, when we went to the third story, which is a schoolroom, uh, that's mm -hmm. where the students were taught, and then there was a bedroom for the tutor. Um, just walking up that staircase, you could feel. Um, just, it was just like energy all around you. Um, and it made me very nervous just going up there. All right, let's stop right there. Let's play a little bit of the tape that we got from that night. Has there any activity been reported in any of these upstairs areas, or is it mainly downstairs? Um, I think in the school room, which is on the third floor. And we'll go up there in a second. Um, is it great painted? Static. Lots of static. It says entertained back in 18. Is this the aboriginal to the house? Um, it is, um, it's not, it was donated. Um, it's a wonderful piece of furniture. Um, and we're getting ready to... Andrew's looking at the now. furniture. Andrew's checking out the entire appointment. <laughs> now, are the lights turned on? There's very little electricity in the house because okay. we do our tours during the day. Okay. Footsteps. You can see the lights downstairs to the 
cracks in the floor. Oh, yeah. 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 Feeling anything, Monty? Any vibes? I'm just very impressed by the whole place. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. I need a point. What was that? More static. Okay. We're going up to the second floor. There's uh, there's been some activity reported in the pants. I'm so impressed how straight you're playing this that you guys aren't full of wisecracks. I was too scared. <laughs> I wasn't there. Oh, there's another floor up. Yeah, that's the floor that Jesus is holding. Oh, is that the one we're No, we didn't have. See, let, let explain about the, the static. Last year when I went to Sid's house, there's a lot of static on the digital recorder, which doesn't record static because it's not, it's digital. It doesn't mm-hmm. record static. So uh, this time they took a totally different recorder, totally different mic, mm-hmm. and ended up being about 20 minutes worth of tape and ended up with five minutes of usable material. The rest of because it was static. Of the, you know, right. when, and, when we and, have, go ahead. And Andrew actually did some research about mm-hmm. that. Yeah, and um, even when you're using equipment that should um, completely uh, kind of evade static, um, when you're in an area where there are a lot of entities, um, they always create static on recording devices. Well, you know, I've read about that, too, and we're going to have Jim Hall on in just a few minutes, and he's with Haunted North Carolina, um, North, HauntedNorthCarolina.com, and they said that happens all the time. They'll have equipment that tests perfectly outside a place. They'll go in, and suddenly the batteries will drain, or they'll get right. they'll get all this weird stuff. Okay, yeah, so uh, there's a red light on the, on the recorder that Chad was using that only moves when there is noise. Right. It registers that it's recording, and at times none of us were speaking there was no 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 noise that we could hear, and the indicator light was going crazy. Right. And okay. that was usually after we would ask a question, like, you know, are we speaking to so-and-so or is so-and-so present? And we would all be quiet, and then we'd see the red light come on. <clears throat> Excuse me, the red light come on. But and now, so, Andrew, didn't you think that you heard something that the other guys didn't hear a couple of times? Yes. <laughs> yes okay. That's why I was so scared. In okay, the, so tell us. In the tutor's room um, on the third story of the house, um, Monty had walked in before me. I walked in, and Chad was behind me. And I was kind of in the center of the room, and that sounded like someone had leaned right over my left shoulder, was right in my ear, and whispered very loudly in a male voice, cookie. Cookie. And so I thought Chad was messing with me, and I turned around to say, why did you say cookie? And realized that he was a good six, seven feet behind me. (laughs) And then I started freaking out, and I was like, who said cookie? Who said cookie? And yeah. That would have been funny if you would have went, I'm in bar. (laughs) (laughs) But the funny thing is, we know that ghosts can sometimes have a sense of humor. And hadn't you just been making cookies that day? Um, I had, and I was due to make cookies for a donation for Rosedale, um, actually for today. And the event was canceled. So I wasn't taking the cookies I was supposed to take out there. So the ghost wanted one of those jack-o'-lantern cookies. It could be that. Um, It could also, we think, was, uh, it could possibly have been a nickname for the cook. Um, because we had some bizarre experiences in the kitchen, and so I feel like yeah. maybe we were being okay. directed we'll down to, to the that. kitchen. All right, let's go to the kitchen. Okay, uh, this is more tape uh, of what was going on when they were walking around. Okay. Lots of static. Now, this floor kind of hangs me out. Um, this is the third floor we're on now. <laughs> Monty just grabbed Andrew. If you want to jump up a bit, you can get down here. <laughs> Oh, it does feel a little heavy up there, doesn't it? It does. There's definitely, yeah. There's a, yeah, there's something on it. Let's try another EVP. Is there anyone in here that would like to make their presence known? Dude, the light flickered on my recording device. Is there anyone here that would like to make their presence known? Please give us a sign. Dude, it was this red light. That- Whoa! <laughs> Oh, oh man! That, that noise. You heard that noise, Andrew, didn't you? Yeah. Yes. It really did. It sounded like a, um, like if you were outside, it'd be like a twig snapping. Right. Um. Just me out as the footsteps in this hollow. That's a train. Anthony claims he put fresh batteries in, so. And we're actually going back downstairs well, at a pretty in the presence of paranormal that there's battery drain. Like. See that weird? We're going down to the kitchen. So what do you think so far, Monty? There's definitely some. Is that just the ducks clicking, or is that the? Oh, now we're down in the now in the, we're down in the kitchen area. Okay. Anthony, do you want to pause it now? Okay, so now you're in the kitchen, and this is where you guys actually saw something. Yes. 
Okay. Yes. Ab- absolutely. We, Pippi, uh, Pippi's got Bonnie in her lap and is putting her hand over we, her headphone like, I don't want to hear anymore. Well, Pip, Pip should have came. She would have loved it because when we went up to the, the schoolroom on the third floor. On the third or third? Third. third. Okay. I'm trying to be good, Pam. Come on. You were really good. But when we went up there, it, it was a schoolroom that they used, you know, edu- educating kids how to read and write, stuff like mm-hmm. that. And uh, illegally at the time, I believe, they taught uh, ch- children of the slaves to read, which they was did. illegal. Yeah. So, okay, but they so had all these lovely little desks laid out for the kids, and mm-hmm. they had little little slate chalkboards <laughs> and chalk. So you thought that would have made uh, Pip feel nostalgic? I, I, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So Pretty what happened? Yeah. The kitchen well, is the, where it got really scary. In the kitchen... Um, you know, we ask if there was somebody there, and uh, and the and kitchen is actually you have to go out of the house and right. then back in a separate door. Back in, mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah. And so we, I locked the door to the house so that we could walk around and go into the kitchen. And at one point, I heard footsteps upstairs. And you know, and you uh, have locked the house behind I've you. So there's the house just behind not behind us. There's no way for anyone to be in there. Right. Okay. And um, so that's when I started getting nervous. We ask if um, if someone was there. Chad asked that if they were, that they give us a sign. And there are these six bundles of dried herbs hanging over a work table near the hearth. Mm-hmm. And so he asked that they make the move, and they were standing stock and, still. And let's go to the tape. Oh, so, yeah. do okay. you? So specifically, you asked for this sign for those yes. bundles to move. Right. Yes. Unfortunately, uh, spent most of her time on uh, uh, happy hours, many long and hot hours. Jerry or cherry? Cherry. Cherry, like that. Cherry. The name of the ghost. Cherry, if you're here, make these things move for us. Oh my God! It's moving. A lot. Wow. Yeah, that's not like good. a halfway turn, and none of the others are moving. You want us to leave? Wow. Okay. Like now, it's not moving anymore. There it goes a little bit, but it wasn't moving before. No, it wasn't moving no. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's not moving now. So they started moving. Now, what so, actually happened was when he said it, one of the bundles that was hanging of dried herbs, it, just imagine you're looking at your watch or a clock, yeah. and it went from six directly to nine, and from nine directly back to six. There was no quiver. So there was it no rotated. Nothing. Right. So yeah, it but it didn't. Rotated. It wasn't like it. So it, it didn't. There was no movement. Right. It was residual like it was movement. on an axis. Yeah. It wasn't swinging right. back and forth. It was just spinning. And then eventually yeah. oh. we had four or five of them all spinning kind of in unison, and that's when I was like, it's time to go. Yeah, so, and if it would have been a, like the, the the breeze or something from the from, I was the, just gonna from ask the vents, that. they would have swung. They wouldn't right. have turned. Yeah, these were turning like they were a globe on an axis, just yeah. a perfect pivot. And the, it first, the first one was the, the first one was like it was mechanical. It just moved, you know, a quarter turn mm-hmm. and directly back to the starting point. There was no residual movement whatsoever. So and you weren't moving around, and it couldn't have been no, the draft of your body there. movement. You're standing there, it. frozen, staring right. at it <laughs> because it's literally it started just turning, and it would do it just back and forth and back and forth, and then eventually some of the others started as well, and um, and then I got really freaked out. And so, and, the, and do you know if there was anything coming through the vents? Uh, well, the kitchen, I don't believe the kitchen no. itself is vented. I don't no, also, that's right. It's the a separate run under it. It's but. also the best list room that we had been in because yeah. there's track we lighting in the there. We had all the lights on in there. Yeah. I see. And was there, uh, are there legends of Rosedale that, that that is something that people have seen, those bundles of herbs moving? No, not the bundles of herbs, but um, that the kitchen is one of the spaces where there's been the most activity. Wow. Well, so you saw that and you were, check please. Yeah, I was pretty, well, I was afraid, to, I had to go back in, into the house to set the alarm before we left, to, like unlock the oh, door no. to the house. And, I was, See, and I was turn ter- off all the lights. I was so scared, I set the alarm off twice <laughs> and had to call the security guy and say, hey, it's Andrew in the board of <laughs> I'm sorry. Right yeah. here. It's 10 o'clock at night and we're not supposed to be here, but we're just yeah. not here. Sorry. Well, the, and, yeah. and so, and we didn't, we weren't able to capture the footsteps on tape or anything that you heard upstairs. I don't think so. It, it, I, Pam, there was 15 minutes of static. Right, there was tape. so much static yeah. that you couldn't get Which through is, it. I mean, and we're in a house that has i mean like four lights yeah um, right and so there's there's should be no electrical interference there should be no static at all but most of the rooms didn't have any lights on in them yeah we, we were just using wow. it. Yeah, we were using a torch a flashlight that uh, that andrew brought with him was all we had to use yeah yikes um right before we go to break uh pippi wants to know did cherry because that's the name of the ghost that supposedly is in the kitchen did cherry say anything did you i heard some responses um i asked if that's who was there and i, I got a yes but the guys didn't hear her, but the red light came on 
like it was recording something. And then I asked if, um, because I was scared by that, and I said, do you want us to go and leave you in peace? I was looking for an out. Yeah. <laughs> I heard, no, don't leave me here alone. Really? Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, we're going to take oh. a break. And when we come back, we're going to have Jim Hall on the phone. He's from hauntednorthcarolina.com. They have a fabulous website.